Joey here. I want to tell you about my latest adventure. It is Labor Day weekend as I'm filming this and my husband and I decided yesterday to take a little field trip up to Mountain Crossings at Neal Gap and then about three miles north to Vogel State Park for a nice little hike and lunch. Uh, you may be familiar with Mountain Crossings. It's the place that most hikers pass by, actually pass literally right through the building uh, on about the third day of their hike north from Springer. And Mountain Crossings is well known for the pack shakedowns that they do for hikers, helping them lighten their load. They go through the pack step by step, help you decide what you should keep, maybe what gear you might need to upgrade or things that you've brought that uh, should stay behind to lighten your load a little bit. So I learned that Mountain Crossings actually will do a virtual pack shakedown. Uh, they charge, I think, $100 for it. You can go through their website, and if you live far away, you can um, get in touch with them and have them do that for you remotely. But that got me thinking, well, why not go now? If you've been watching me, you know I've been kind of obsessing about gear for two months, and I'm ready to sort of move out of that gear acquisition phase into the gear testing out in the field, and I thought this would be a perfect time to stop at Mountain Crossings and have them go through my things and give me some real expert advice on what to keep and what to take away. So I emailed and said, can I come by and have you do that for me? And they said, sure, uh, our staff would be happy to help you. So we hopped in the car, took a nice uh, mountain drive up there and stopped in and talked with uh, Jason and uh, with Bill and I'll tell you how they helped me after we take a minute and I'll show you what was in my pack that I took uh, with me I and mean, it's everything that I would take on the trail if I were to leave today. Okay before I head out for my shakedown at Mountain Crossings I wanted to go ahead and show you what I'm starting with and we'll see what I end up with. I'll take you through this fairly quickly. We'll start here with clothing. I have uh, just a regular hat. Um, I have on my eye on another one that I'm going to get before I leave but this is the one I've been using right now. Uh, a dry bag to put my clothes in. Uh, two pairs of socks. Uh, one is an Injinji sock liner. The other is uh, smart wool low-cut socks. Some underwear. I have a pair of darn tough socks here along with some lightweight. It's a lightweight shirt and long underwear that I use for sleeping. I have a little smart wool beanie that I'll use for sleeping and if it's real cold I'll put it on under my puffy which is right here. Um, not the smallest puffy in the world but I got it on Amazon. Uh, for a really good price and it's got a hood which is nice. have a Columbia fleece that I like a lot. It's very lightweight and also a pair of shorts for when it gets a little bit warmer. I can sleep in these or hike in these. Uh, when it's cooler, my base layer I have, um, this is from Columbia and they have, if I can find it here, like a reflective interior coating. So I just got these and I'm trying to decide if those are going to go with me and then I've got the Capeline shirt from Patagonia that I like a lot. Uh, also have a journal. This is a Midori journal. It's pretty small. Um, it's got real thin paper that's lightweight and um, fits in a traveler's journal cover, but I just need something super thin that I can take and journal and then I'll replace that along with a pen and a sharpie if I need to leave notes. Have my REI get outside um, bandana uh, buff. And this is a little cooling towel when it's wet. It's pretty heavy. I cut it down to a smaller size for when it's real hot. Uh, may decide to leave this out just because of the weight. I have a Go Girl, some TP. And for digging cat holes, I just use a, a tent stake. It's a real lightweight tent stake I picked up at Walmart. Along with a pee rag. I showed in another video how I cut this down from a bandana. And uh, that will just hang on my, my pack with the um, carabiner there. I have some hand sanitizer, whistle for safety, uh, Blistex, as I always have dry lips, and then this little ball, I got I think eight of these at the dollar store. I wanted something super lightweight, it's hollow inside, uh, to be able to roll my feet on and massage them because I get plantar fasciitis and sometimes have just sore feet at the end of the day. have a little mirror for safety, a uh, small uh, flashlight, which I'm probably going to replace. It's a little bit heavy, so I'm going to get something lighter. Got my headlamp here. This is a Petzl. Has multiple settings on it that I like. Um, bug net. That's handy. Well, at certain times of year. Uh, have this little Lucy light. These are cool. Nice in the tent. But again, that's a luxury item, so it may or may not end up going with me. I have a little towel here, and this little bag. I think actually will double as a rock bag for when I hang my bag, bear bag, with my food in it. Which right now, that's my food bag, and. 
have a compass for safety, little bag to put all these doodads in. And uh, then my kitchen is up here. I have a little, um, I believe that's a GSI stove and mug. The mug fits inside and it will also hold my knife. This is a little scraper that I had at home and just think I'll take this, it's super lightweight and I can use it to scrape the pot if it gets sticky inside. Um, handy wipes, those are disposable so I can replace. Have my Esbit stove, some of the wax fuel cubes I made just as a backup and also some of the original Esbit cubes. Uh, again, I may end up switching out my stove, we'll see. Uh, for fire starting, I like to have multiple ways to do things so I have some fireproof matches here, a fire starter and a big mini lighter. I also have a little flask, another luxury item. Got this on mass drop and uh, probably won't be drinking too much on the trail so I may or may not bring that. Have a little um, sitting pad. This is a real handy thermarest. I can also use this, uh, this is my cat. <laughs> he is very curious about all my preparations. Uh, anyway, this is great, not only to sit on but also uh, when I'm sleeping. Sometimes my hips and shoulders get a little bit too much pressure and I can add that underneath my sleeping pad. Now for toiletries, I have a lot of odds and ends here, toothpaste, some um, Dr. Bronner soap. I do plan to take a razor because I do like to shave certain parts of me. <laughs> Q-tips, toothbrush, some gold bonds. Um, I've got, I don't know, about six feet of duct tape here and there's a needle stuck in, earplugs, two kinds of bug spray. This one is a natural bug spray. It's the Repel Lemon Eucalyptus that I put in a smaller bottle. Um, first aid and meds, I have a few bandages, a little tiny thing of um, super glue if I need to seal a wound in an emergency, uh, some pills. I've also got my poison ivy kit. I am very allergic to poison ivy. Um, this is a charger I picked up. Um, not my absolute favorite, but it works and it does charge um, with the sun just enough to uh, get an extra charge out of it in case of an emergency so I could make a phone call if my phone dies completely, assuming I find some sunshine. <laughs> um, and I'll be replacing this with a, a, a outlet or a jack that's got two ports in it, two USB ports. I am taking my emergency bivy uh, just because it's come in handy in the past when it's been real cold, particularly if my down sleeping bag should happen to get wet. This is my little wallet that I just picked up the other day. I thought it was really cute, it's recycled. Uh, as far as hydration, I have a smart water bottle and a um, uh, Sawyer squeeze. That's not the mini, it's the regular size. I have a two liter bladder because I like to use the bladder in my pack along with some um, tablets. Those are the four hour tablets. Uh, let me check the brand on these. These are um, uh, MicroPure. Sorry about that. MicroPure tablets. Uh, you just drop one of those into a liter of water, let it sit four hours. And so if I'm real concerned about water quality, I'll use those. Um, my sleeping pad and sleeping bag liner are not in their bags right now. Working on another project that I'll show you another time, but I have both of those along with my um, Kelty down sleeping bag. I showed you this in another video. It's the Trail Logic um, 20 degree minimum, I think, rating. 31 is the rating on the bag. My big Agnes, this is the, um, you can see the big X, I got it at REI, garage sale, I love REI. It's the Scout Plus UL2. And I really uh, am enjoying that. I, I wish it had a little bit more of a view, but it's a single wall tent. Seems to do well. And I've got the um, footprint here and my tent stakes. Now, two more things. And this is my um, Osprey Cirrus 50 bag, which I really do like, but it's three and a half pounds. So I'm going to switch it out and get something that weighs less than two pounds and save a good pound and a half for my trip. That is the cover that goes with it. And then I got a white contractor bag that fits inside the pack very well. It's nice, heavy duty, and searched high and low to find these. They were on Amazon, but only if you bought through Amazon Pantry, and all my local stores didn't carry them, but Ace did, Ace Hardware, and I got a box of 10 for $5.99, so I was real happy with that. Yeah, I'm going to start in April and keep that going, go the whole way. It's starting to look like we might have a few chilly nights, maybe. Okay. 
This would be some extra weight once you get some kind of sleep system that you're comfortable with. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the department or something we'll try to get rid of. It's nice to be able to take a bunch of nice pictures, but in the beginning, you know, really being as light as possible, having just what you need, and we don't really need this, so yeah. we're going to go ahead and put that in the pile. Um, you'd probably get a maybe better use out of a non-solar one. These mm -hmm. kind of work, but in the end, the trees and the clouds yeah. end up making these not really very functional mm -hmm. in this part of the country. So I'm just going to go ahead and suggest. Some I have some clothes over there. By April, you may be able to get away without carrying rain pants. Um, a good middle ground. What the green skirts fit. Got it. So good. This kit here seems very reasonable. Pretty good with the bug spray here. That's some lotion, maybe. Sunscreen. Sunscreen, cool. And then I got poison ivy stuff because I'm really allergic. Cool. So I didn't open it up. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's a little cooling towel. Mm -hmm. Which is a lot heavier when it's wet and when it's real hot. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, though, you seem to have done pretty well for yourself here. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, so that's what I took up to Mountain Crossings. My pack was overloaded and it was pretty interesting. Uh, once I got everything in there, I was a little surprised when I realized I didn't have any room for food. And I thought that they might really rip me apart and take out a lot of things in my bag, but I was surprised that we only ended up taking about 1.7 pounds of stuff out. And one of the first things that came out was, whoops, <laughs> my rain pants. I thought these would be good to start with, but Jason said, you know what, a lot of people don't even take rain pants or they use a rain kilt, uh, which is something that you could make at home or you could buy. So rain pants were first to go. And then something that didn't surprise me at all was my little Lucy light. This is a great solar power little light that you can use in your tent at night uh, for a little extra illumination. I don't really need it, but I thought it might be kind of nice if I want to just curl up and do a little journaling before I go to sleep if I don't crash the minute that I lay down. So um, Lucy Light is out. It's lightweight, but um, not necessary. And one thing that Jason did tell me is that anything that he suggested that I take out, I could certainly take with me. It's just a matter of personal preference, but these were all things that he thought were not absolutely necessary for a successful through hike. The next two items also surprised me a little bit. Mirror, you might think, is purely vanity, but I was thinking of this in terms of a safety item. It's real lightweight. I did think maybe cutting in half because I don't need a full-size one or finding a smaller one, but this was a, a quick out of the pack. Uh, compass as well. This is one that I think I will put back just because I'm very safety conscious and I do have maps and I do want to take a compass in case I should just so happen to wander off the trail and, um, you know, trying to find a place to go to the bathroom or anything like that. I don't want to get lost, so this is a really lightweight thing that's probably going to eke its way back into my pack. Next up, not a surprise, my cooling towel. Uh, this, if you dry it out, is not too heavy, and I had a bigger one, I think I showed in a larger, in a different video, cut it down to about a quarter of the size, but when you moisten this thing, it um, weighs a good amount. So this is something I definitely don't need. This is out. Next my trusty emergency bivy. <laughs> this is like a safety blanket to me because I had that terrible night in May when I just froze my backside off and I really was concerned about hypothermia. So I wanted to take this, but I've discovered that I can actually get an emergency blanket that's much smaller than this. Uh, will still do the same um, job and keep me warm in an emergency. So the emergency bivy is likely not going with me. Last but not least, oh wait, not quite last. I'll tell you the last thing in just a minute. This is a 5,000 milliamp per hour charger. Um, it's not the best quality in the world, but it does, um, you can charge it electrically and it'll hold a charge that can do my iPhone two times, I think. Um, and then it will also get a small uh, solar charge, but not enough to fill up the whole thing, just enough to get a charge to make a couple of emergency phone calls. So uh, he suggested that maybe I replace this with something that was not solar and maybe a little bit more compact. 
So the last thing that he said I didn't need was my little tripod, which I'm using right now to, um, to film this. And um, it's got also a little um, remote control that goes with it. Just a few ounces, but again, if I'm counting grams, those are things that I could leave behind. So that was the stuff that was in the pack. Uh, a couple other things we talked about, my tent, uh, I have a big Agnes um, Scout Plus UL2. It's pretty lightweight. It's not freestanding. It uses these trekking poles and I could possibly switch that out for one that might be a little bit more comfortable, but really a pretty good choice. Uh, my sleeping pad is the static, uh, the Climate uh, V insulated version and he suggested that maybe I could get something that would be a little bit warmer than that, but I do have a sleeping bag liner and so with the liner and with my uh, 31 degree bag, which goes down to a lower limit of 20, I should be pretty comfortable most of the time on the trail. The big thing that needed to be changed, and I saw this coming in, was my pack. My Osprey pack is a Cirrus 50. I have come to like it after using it for a little bit, but it's three and a half pounds and that's just really too much. And it's also got lots of pockets uh, at places it, to me to lose things. Um, it also has a wonderful little um, suspension system in the back that I like but it's not adjustable size wise and it really just doesn't fit me perfectly so it made sense to go ahead and replace this and get a pack that uh, fits me better and is much more lightweight. So working with Bill we tried on all kinds of packs. I tried the ULA which they had in the store and I really thought that I was going to like that because so many other people do. It turns out it cut into my lower back and just could, we couldn't find one that was comfortable for me. So I took a look at this pack. This is the Granite Gear. This is the woman's version and it is the um, Crown 2 which is their newer version and I really like this pack. It's only two pounds so I shaved a whole pound and a half off the weight that I'm going to be carrying just by switching out my pack. Uh, it's got a more lightweight system in the back, but it does have some structure to it. Uh, stretchy little pockets, great stretchy pocket on the front, which I really wanted. I didn't have in my other pack, so I can put wet clothes here, my tent if it needs to dry out, things like that. So I'm real happy with this. I'll be taking it out on the trail in a few weeks and uh, giving it a real... Um, live field test but overall I think it was really a tremendously successful day at Mountain Crossing so I want to thank the staff there for being so helpful taking so much time to walk me as a newbie backpacker through what I might encounter on the trail and giving me their expert advice so I hope this has been useful for you as well and I'll look forward to seeing you on the trail if you've enjoyed this video um, just uh, hit subscribe and you can see what's coming up next as I plan my hike thanks